how SpaceX's Starship will handle life support. For a spaceship to function in deep space, the people in it also need to function properly. Life support systems have been the cause of major head scratches for aerospace engineers in the early NASA days, and SpaceX needs to build an ingenious solution. With the level of radiation in deep space and other challenges that comes with spending an extended period in space, how is SpaceX planning to solve these problems? What is SpaceX building into the Starship to handle all-round life support? Well, we'll find out in just a second, but before that, please subscribe to FutureFile to watch more fascinating videos on futuristic tech. Starship is the company's primary goal, with Musk aiming to construct a completely reusable rocket system capable of launching goods or up to 100 passengers at a time. While SpaceX's current Falcon fleet is partially reusable due to the company's ability to land and reuse the rocket's boosters, Musk thinks Starship will change space travel into something more comparable to commercial air travel. The massive size of the rocket would also allow it to carry many times as much cargo at once. For example, whereas SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets can launch up to 60 Starlink satellites at a time, SpaceX claims Starship would be able to launch 400 Starlink satellites at a time. The business has swiftly expanded its Boca Chica, Texas facility, where it has now undertaken brief flight testing of early Starship prototypes. However, the Starship development program has experienced a number of devastating failures in the last year. Musk recently moved the company's emphasis to Starship, declaring in June that construction on the rocket must be accelerated dramatically and urgently. And three months later, Musk's desperation looks to be bearing fruit. His tone has evolved since earlier projections of the Starship flying very rapidly, as Musk warned on Monday that the first Starship missions to orbit may not succeed, citing SpaceX's uncharted region. No one has ever built a completely reusable orbital rocket, Musk added. He also stated that SpaceX has not yet completed much work on the design of the Starship's cabin or interior for passengers. Notably, Musk emphasized SpaceX's experience developing a complicated life support system that can deal with a broad range of conditions. This is where our primary topic of interest gets even more interesting, as SpaceX has the task of designing a uniquely efficient life support system for the Starship. Musk has previously mentioned life support and human health in his Starship presentations, but only briefly. The SpaceX CEO was questioned twice during his most recent presentation about the sorts of life support systems that Starship would utilize. I don't think it's actually super hard to do that, relative to the spacecraft itself, Musk said. The life support system is pretty straightforward. In the near term, SpaceX plans for Starship to fly missions to low Earth orbit and then to the moon, but Mars remains Musk's long-term goal. The company will reach the red planet, given enough time, Musk said, but the question is, how long will it take us? This, however, does not provide any clear answers in light of Musk's other contradicting statements. But what goes into a life support system? A life support system includes everything required for humanity to basically survive here on Earth. Anything that keeps a crew alive and operating and that environment safe for them is basically the life support system, says John Cover, NASA's deputy system manager for the International Space Station's life support system. The most basic requirement is the environment. Life support systems must provide the proper gas combination for humans to breathe, while also removing carbon dioxide from the air before it accumulates to a harmful level. Temperatures and air pressure must be kept within acceptable limits. SpaceX has some expertise with life support systems thanks to its new Crew Dragon crew capsule, which is meant to transport humans to the International Space Station. However, providing life support for a brief voyage to orbit is very different than providing life support for weeks or months in deep space. On the International Space Station, where people reside for months at a time, a regenerative system for things like oxygen and water is in place, which means they're recycled in a closed-loop system. Urine and sweat are recycled and reused as drinking water, while some of the water is electrolyzed to separate oxygen and hydrogen so that humans may breathe. Musk did suggest that the Starship's life support systems will be regenerative. However, life support systems are typically large and complicated, altering the vehicle's operation. It is also critical to understand how to keep people safe in emergency circumstances. Musk predicts that humans will be able to go to space aboard Starship as early as next year, so working out the life support system should be a top focus in the next months. Because the technology exists now, they may be able to meet the ambitious time frame. However, SpaceX has little recorded experience with regenerative life support systems. Despite the fact that the Crew Dragon's life support system is not regenerative, no individuals have flown on the vehicle as of yet. Things get significantly more complicated if SpaceX wishes to maintain a long-term presence on the moon. For one thing, the more time individuals spend away from Earth, the more they are exposed to deep space radiation and galactic cosmic rays. These are very energetic particles emitted by the sun or distant sources outside our galaxy. 
they have the ability to puncture the skin and other materials, inflicting injury to biological tissues. The majority of this radiation is shielded from humans by the Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field, but that protection is lost in deep space and on the Moon. Because they were only on the Moon for brief periods of time, the Apollo astronauts only received minor increases in radiation. Living on the Moon will expose you to a whole different degree of radiation, and if the Sun experiences a significant solar flare, it may send a massive dosage of radiation towards the Moon. According to Don O'Veal, NASA and experts believe that increased radiation exposure might cause central nervous system damage and impair brain function. But in the end, we don't know since we haven't sent people into deep space for extended periods of time. Some form of radiation shielding will be required, and the stainless steel exterior of the Starship may not be sufficient to protect personnel for an extended period of time on the surface. Experts have recommended coating long-term lunar dwellings with water or ice to slow down these particles, but some components in cosmic rays, known as heavy ions, may be able to penetrate even that. Perhaps the best alternative is to build dwellings coated with lunar dirt, which will need a large amount of excavation and building equipment. Musk intimated in his most recent presentation that SpaceX would do the same. SpaceX engineers are certainly well aware of all of this and have taken them into account. There are other more issues that must be addressed. For one reason, specialists are unsure if humans can survive and thrive in the Moon's low gravity environment. Our bones and muscles are acclimated to Earth's gravity, but they may degenerate faster on the Moon, which has one-sixth the gravity of our planet. There's also the issue of people's fundamental comfort to consider. During the launch, design elements such as lighting and chair angle may have an influence on how people feel and behave. Musk has mentioned sending 100 passengers up on Starship, with each person receiving around 10 cubic meters of space. But that may turn out not to be enough in the grand scheme of things, negatively affecting people's mental states. These issues are also only the tip of the iceberg. To begin a lunar outpost, much alone send humans to Mars forever, so much more will need to be handled. Finally, SpaceX can choose to address these issues after Starship construction is complete, but this would delay when humans will be able to go to the moon or aboard Starship at all. Musk is known to alternate between contradiction and brutal honesty regarding plans for the settling of the moon and Mars, and getting to Mars, I think, is not the fundamental issue. The fundamental issue is building a base, building a city on Mars that is self-sustaining, Musk said. We are going to build a propellant plant, an initial Mars base, Mars Base Alpha, and then get it to the point where it's self-sustaining. I want to emphasize that this is a very hard and dangerous, difficult thing, not for the faint of heart, he added. Good chance you'll die, it's going to be tough going, but it will be pretty glorious if it works out. Whether or not reliable life support systems will be built within the timeline expected of SpaceX remains to be seen. Clearly, there is much work left too, and the work is far from easy. So, what do you think? Do you think SpaceX can provide a reliable solution for life support quickly? Or do you think the jury is still out on that? Well, let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this video, you may also enjoy this next video that is shown in the end screen. See you there.